Hi there, this is Morgan with Morgan Burke's Photography and Product Shop, and today I'm going to show you a tutorial that tells you how I save my images um, when I finish working on them in Photoshop. So this is the photo that I'll be using today, and as you can see, I've already got all of my layers in here um, that I've used when editing this photo. So today I'm not going to show you how I edited it, I'm just going to show you how I'm going to save it. So um, this is the full size file. So the first thing I'm going to do when I'm ready to save, um, a lot of people think that you have to flatten your image. I'm here to tell you, you do not have to flatten, I promise. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to File, and I'm gonna go to Save As. And then I'm going to navigate in here to where I want to save these photos. Um, usually what I do is I name the file after the client. Um, and so here you can see our family photos. Um, their last name is Rodriguez, so our family photos. You can put their whole last name, whatever you wanna do. Um, so the first thing I do is I simply save it as a Photoshop file. This is just in case I ever need to go back and open this. Maybe I made a mistake, I noticed something that's a little off, or I want to prepare the image better for a specific type of print my client wants. Um, basically, I'm saving it as a Photoshop file so that all of the layers that it took me to edit that photo are going to be intact. I'll have all my layers later. Um, if something you know, were to happen to my computer and it closed down, all of my layers would be saved. So that's what I'm gonna do here. Um, this name of the file is actually just what it was from my camera. I'm gonna leave that how it is, but feel free to change yours if you want to. Um, so since my file type is already showing here as Photoshop, I can just leave it like that. If yours isn't, you'll wanna open it up here, find Photoshop, and then hit save. And then this, I just hit okay. And then I wait for a second down here, it'll show you your progress on saving the photo. Um, so if you want to go to File Open, and you can see that your file right there is saved. This is your Photoshop file. So you don't have to go to File Open on a regular basis. I just wanted to show you that this file is saved. Okay, so now the next thing I do, um, pretty much I should say that each of my images that I take, every single photo, has three copies that I save. The first is the Photoshop file that I just showed you. That's how I save it first. Uh, second, I save it as a high-resolution JPEG file, and this is what I use um, and what I deliver to my clients for printing. So I go to File, Save As, and again, you do not have to flatten to save as a JPEG. A lot of people think that you do. Uh, you really don't. It's just an extra unnecessary step. Um, so all I have to do here is just go to JPEG, select that. There's another one called JPEG 2000, JPEG Stereo. I use regular JPEG, so the .jpg or .jpeg file. Okay, so then I just hit save. This little button here, or this little box, I'm sorry, will pop up. Um, the settings that I use here, I use baseline standard, and then if this is my printing file, which in this case it is, I want to save it with a quality of 10 or more, just to make sure that the file is high resolution and can be used um, properly in printing. So usually I save it as a 12. A lot of people think it's a little bit unnecessary, just makes it too large. I don't want to take any chances. I would rather deliver a file that's too large than one that's too small. So I save it with a quality of 12. This says maximum baseline standard, and then I hit OK. All done. I didn't have to flatten. It just saved. Um, and if you want to go to File Open, you can see your progress. Your JPEG file is saved right there. Okay. So the last thing I do is I save a third file. Um, and it's also going to be a JPEG file, but I want it to be watermarked, and I'm going to resize it smaller so that my clients can use it easily on the web, so it doesn't take them a long time to upload it, and also so that the file looks best when it's uploaded um, onto an online site. Sometimes they compress your photos, can make it look a little funny, so I resize it automatically so my clients don't have to worry about it later, and also so I can make sure that the work that I've done looks great on the web. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to hit this little button at the bottom of my layers panel that looks like a little sheet of paper with the corner turned up. I'm just gonna click that. You won't notice any changes to your photo. This is just a new blank layer. But what I'm gonna do here, I have a watermark saved as a brush. And if you don't have that, I do have a tutorial that shows you how to do that. Um, I can link it in the comments of this video or the, you know, below the video. Okay, so I'm gonna hit my brush, my brush key. And then in my panel, I just scroll through and I find my watermark brush. And mine's pretty close to the top because I use it all the time. So once that's done, I'm just gonna click this. And then all I do here is I just make it a little larger. I'm doing this by hitting my right bracket key on my keyboard. Um, it's the one very near to your backspace key um, and near to the letter P. 
Okay, so here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure my brush is set to white. That's the color that I want my watermark to be. And here my opacity is set to 10%. So if I click it on here, it's gonna be very light. So I'm gonna delete that. Uh, that means I have to add a new blank layer again. So I just hit that little sheet of paper and it popped back up. So here I'm gonna hit the zero on my keyboard and it makes my opacity 100%. You can also just scroll down here, pull it all the way over to the right and then your brush is 100% um, opacity. So then all I do is just click once on my photo and there's my watermark. Um, and putting it on its own layer means you can turn this on and off or you can grab your move tool here and change its positioning later if you wanted to. Um, that also means that you can turn the opacity down later if you feel like it's a little too overwhelming, you can lighten it up um, however you feel. Okay, so once this is done, what I'm going to do, you can either run um, an action that resizes your image for web. I have a few of those actions on my site actually. Um, or you can, I'll show you how to do it manually here. So what we'll do is we will go to image and then go to duplicate. And so what this is gonna do is it's gonna make a copy of your photo. And if you do this manually every time, you actually can just call this web. So it's the same name as your image file with the word web after. So you know that that's your web sized file. And then you hit okay. And this is actually creating a second copy of your photo up here. It doesn't look like anything changed because the files are the same, but you can see your new file up here in this window. Okay, so now this is the only time I'm ever going to say that I flatten my images because I, I really don't like to flatten at all. But on my copy, my web sized file, this is when I'm going to do it. So to flatten my file, I'm just going to right click on the background layer, maybe, yes, and hit flatten image. Okay, so this flattens your photo. Now I never, never, never suggest doing this on a file that is not a duplicated copy of your image. I just don't like uh, feeling like something could happen and I could lose all that work I did. So on this file over here, you'll see I still have all my layers intact, um, but on this web copy up here, this is the one that I flattened. So, okay, I'll stop harping on that. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to resize this photo. Uh, now, as you can see, it's a rather large file. Um, I'm only at 16% right now, um, zoomed out basically. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to image, image size, and then here is where you resize your photo. Um, usually I use a width of 1600 pixels on mine because I like them to be full screen on Facebook. I do have to say though, if you are somebody who gives sneak peeks prior to your clients purchasing the image, you might wanna use a smaller size just so nobody feels inclined to download these directly from Facebook um, because 1600 pixels is still a, a rather large file. It's not you know super high quality, but they could, uh, perhaps print from it if they wanted to. So um, you might want to use a smaller size if you're worried about that. I'm not, my, um, my clients pay in advance, so when I post their sneak peeks and stuff, this is, they're already paid in full. I can show them the high resolution files. It's not a big deal to me, but if it is to you, I just wanted you to be aware of that. So all I'm gonna do here, um, your width and your height are constrained together so that your photo won't look squished. Um, it keeps your proportions basically. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna type in 1600 and it makes the adjustment to your height as well and then I hit okay. If you feel like changing the resolution, have at it. Um, I usually don't, I just put 1600 pixels and hit okay. Again, this is, I mean, all up to you. You could make as many um, different you know, variations from what I'm doing here as you'd like. Um, and so this file is now a smaller size and all I have to do is go to File, Save As. I'm going to select JPEG again and then my label here is already uh, set to web. If it wasn't, I would type web or copy something so that I'm not saving over my original file. I do not want to save over that one. That's my high resolution file uh, and if I saved over it, I'd have to go back um, and resave it again. But that's why I do have the Photoshop file just in case um, that that ever happened, I would have all my layers intact. I could go back and save the high resolution file. Anyway, this is a really long winded way of saying just save right here. Okay, here, um, your image quality doesn't need to be a 12. It's um, a little unnecessary since this is a web file. I usually just click right in the middle, um, a quality of six. Feel free to change that, experiment as you wish. And then I hit okay, and I'm done. So you go to file open, and you can see all three files um, of that one image. Um, and it does take a little bit of time to save it th three times, 
um, but it's it's very nice to have your backup just in case you've got your high resolution you've got your website file you can deliver to your clients and you've got your Photoshop file for you if you ever need to go back re-edit fix something you're saved so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you have any questions you can always email me at Morgan at Morgan or you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Morgan Burks photography thank you so much for watching have a great day